goddamn budget is impossible. I know. I've gone through it three times already. The bureaucrats and politicians in Sacramento use Prop 13 as an excuse to cut our budget. In the meantime, they increase their own salaries and pension plans. We have no choice. We must reduce patient load and staff. Prepare a list. Use the following criteria. We will discharge or transfer to halfway houses any patient who has not violently attacked any other patient or staff member in the last five years. Some criteria. Hello, Mrs. Bartholomew. This is Dr. Stevens at Napa State Hospital. Oh, yes. Hello, doctor. Mrs. Bartholomew, we have a patient by the name of Ethel Janowski who I'd like to transfer to your care. You know I'm always ready to help, doctor. Yes, I do. But I wanted to speak with you personally about Ethel. She's given us only minor problems in the 13 years she's been here at Napa. But she was responsible for the murder of six people. Her first victim was her grandmother. That was in 1973. I see. The decision rests entirely with you, Mrs. Bartholomew. Well, doctor, you know my motto. We must never lose hope. I'm Mrs. Schmidt, and this is Ethel Janowski. Welcome to Bartholomew House, Ethel. I'm Hope Bartholomew. I know you're going to be very happy here. Goodbye, Ethel. Thank you, matron. doing here? He's a patient, Ethel, like yourself. That's a lie! He's a cop. He's the one who put me here. I'm sure you're mistaken, Ethel. He's a cop who put me in here. This man's name is Edgar Stanley. And at no time during his life was he ever a police officer. He's the one who put me here. This will be your room while you're with us, Ethel. I'll leave you alone now to get settled. I knew you weren't really dead, Granny. Lunch is now being served. I repeat. Luncheon is now being served.
sit in the first chair at home. All right, Brandy. Come on down, Greg. You should stand cold. How many times do I have to tell you I can't eat that swill? Come on down, Greg. I got something that special this evening in your life. seasoning, Greg. It brings a little color to your face. <laughs> I don't want any jam pills. I want a snack, Granny. Ethel, I'm not your grandmother. From what I understand, she's been dead for some time. You're trying to starve me to death, just like before, Granny. Ethel, you take your pill now. I don't want any jam pills. I want a snack. I'll have to report this to Dr. Stevens, and it may affect your stay here.
Dr. Bartholomew. May I speak with Dr. Stevens? Hello, Mrs. Bartholomew. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. It's Esso Donowski I'm calling about. Is there a problem? Yes, it was a minor one, but I felt I should report it. Ethel refused to take her medication, and there was a terrible scene. Okay, you loonies, listen up. Miss Bartholomew had to go into town. That means I'm in charge. What time is dinner? Dinner? Yeah, dinner. Well, dinner's gonna be a little late tonight. And I don't want to hear any complaints about the corned beef hash.
This is the worst corned beef I've ever tasted. You're wrong about that. It's not bad. Not bad. <laughs> This candy bar sure tastes good. It's all chocolatey and sweet inside.
Nothing like this has ever happened at Bartholomew House. I'm sure it must have been an accident. Accident? Lady, that man was hung. It's terrible. It's terrible. I want to talk to every person living in this house. Of course, Lieutenant. Is it almost lunchtime yet, Granny? I'm Lieutenant Frank Harris, San Francisco Police Department, Homicide Division. This is Ethel Janowski, Lieutenant. Miss Janowski, did you hear or see anything out of the ordinary last night? I didn't see anything. I was watching Gunsmoke on TV. I see. You didn't hear any sounds of a struggle? No. All right. Thank you, Mr. Janowski. I saw what happened last night. I don't know what you're talking about, Detective Sergeant. It reminds me of my first wife. Of course, I didn't hang her. I strangled her. And I was able to collect $84,000 in life insurance. I made it look like a burglary. I'm not going to tell that cop out there anything, but you're going to give me your desserts for the next month. Let's have it.
I made you some tea. I appreciate you not saying anything. Mmm, nice hot tea. Yeah, it's good and hot. It's got to be hot or I won't drink it. Yeah, me too. This tea is good and hot. That's the way I like it. Well, I guess I'd better drink it up while it's hot. Yeah. You know, this reminds me of my third wife. I gave her a cup of coffee with strychnine in it. Then I typed a note to make her look like suicide. But I know you wouldn't put anything in my tea, Ethel. Oh, the tea got cold while we were talking. I just can't drink cold tea. Thanks anyway, Ethel. We'll set up shop right here. Ethel, I'd like to talk to you.
I know these terrible events must be very upsetting to you. Nothing like this has ever happened at Bartholomew House. It's terrible, just terrible. But you know my motto, we must never lose hope. here at Bartholomew House, and those rules must be and will be enforced. No food is allowed in the rooms. You give me those pretzels, Granny! I will not. Give me those pretzels, Granny! I guess I just lost hope. and trying to get through to Hope Bartholomew for the past two days. Maybe the phone's out of order. I don't know. It sounds like it's ringing. Hmm. I'd better go over there. Something might be wrong. Please tell Mrs. Bartholomew I'm here. It's all right, Ethel. I'll find her myself. Mrs. Bartholomew? Mrs.
Welcome to Bartholomew House. <laughs> I'm Hope Bartholomew, and I hope you'll be very happy. <laughs>